Chapter 5. Soul of Ice Sarah went on the offensive first. The moment that the stout man declared the start of the match, she struck. She wasn't as skilled at moving her soul energy around as Mike by a wide margin, but she did know how to force some of her energy into her legs to increase her speed for a while. She felt the air within the Mega Dojo compress ahead of her as she surged forward. Her arms held close to her sides, ready to lash out. It was less than a second before she had crossed the multiple yards between herself and her opponent. She wound up and launched her fist in the direction of Jason's chest. Even she couldn't actually register every stage of her advance, and yet, just before she would have struck her mark, there was a flash of pale yellow light and Jason was gone. Sarah's fist struck only more air. Sarah looked around. She hadn't been able to follow Jason's movement any more than to gauge its initial direction. She was floored that this opponent somehow seemed nearly as fast as Mike at his best. Aside from James at the start, who could have undoubtedly hit many times harder than Mike had been able to, it seemed as if Team Beatdown wasn't all about beating their opponents down after all. In reality, they were more about balancing speed and power. That meant that Sarah should expect some technique from Jason to deal increased damage as well. This all crossed Sarah's mind in the half second that it took her to locate her opponent. He dropped all fours, grabbing at the ground to cancel his momentum from his dodge. Then, even before he had come to a complete stop, there was another surge of pale yellow, almost golden light, and he was wrapped in a translucent shell that took on a recognizable shape. Is that a gorilla? Sarah had time to wonder before the light-clad Jason was upon her. Her eyes had not deceived her. Jason was, in fact, wrapped in a translucent, solid light avatar of an oversized gorilla. He struck out with his massive arm and double ham-sized fist. Sarah, acting solely on instinct, as her mind hadn't managed to catch up yet, danced inside of Jason's strike. Without missing a beat, though, Jason flexed his avatar's arm and smacked Sarah in the head with his forearm. She lost her balance and tumbled to her right. Luckily, she had the presence of mind to fall into a roll, spring back up, and shuffle away. If she hadn't, things would have gone very badly for her, as it was only a moment later that Jason's huge golden knuckles came down at the ground where she had almost fallen. The impact was great enough to leave a dent in the arena's specially designed, impact-resistant floor. Sarah's eyes went wide with disbelief. Her breathing was heavy, not from fatigue, not yet, but from surprise. She'd never actually seen someone with this ability. At least, she reminded herself, I have the speed advantage. I can avoid him until I can get my bearings. It was then that she remembered, too late, that her opponent had been able to move with incredible speed once already. As Sarah rushed to increase the distance between herself and her opponent, Jason's avatar changed. It remained larger than his body, but became leaner and more streamlined, with some kind of narrow tail. It was still modeled after a primate, but this one was a monkey, not an ape, and it had strong, springy, muscular legs that launched it clear over Sarah's head. As Jason sailed past her, he grabbed Sarah's face in his avatar's hand, shoving it downward. She slammed into the arena floor and bounced. Meanwhile, Jason skid to a stop and his avatar changed again to gorilla shape. He locked his hammy fists together and smacked Sarah out of the air, smashing her right back into the ground. Sarah bounced again, higher this time, and then fell face first, heavier than a sack of potatoes. Jason's avatar shrunk until it was nothing more than a soft golden glow surrounding his body, and he waited as the stout man began to count. Everyone in the room, including Sarah herself, was a little surprised when, at the count of seven, she stood back up again. Her nose was bloody, one of her eyes was blackened, and there were other less visible injuries across the rest of her body, but the look that she gave her opponent was as fierce and as confident as ever. Good, Jason said with a smile. For a second there, I thought this heart-to-heart -heart wasn't going to be any fun at all. Sarah didn't reply. She was thinking about something. She had noticed something about the way that Jason had moved during their last skirmish, and the way it had been his avatars which provided him with his speed and strength, not his actual body. It was just a hunch, but she had an idea of how she might be able to bring this guy down. She just had to test it first. Keeping that in mind, she did the most unexpected thing that a competent fighter might do. She repeated her first move from the beginning of the match. She lunged forward quickly, directly toward Jason. She even struck with the same hand, aiming for the same point on her foe's torso. When Jason reacted, despite the pain in her face, Sarah smiled. Her hunch had been right. Despite making an identical attack, telegraphing it just as plainly as she had the last time, and even cutting back her speed a bit for good measure, despite the fact that her opponent should have had no issue countering her attack with his strength and speed. He simply assumed his high-speed avatar again and banked to the side as he had before. He skid to a stop as he had before. He changed rapidly to his gorilla avatar as he had before. It was just as Sarah had reasoned. Jason's avatars gave him huge boosts in strength, speed, and probably even defense, but they were cumbersome and hard to steer. So, more concerned with landing hits than he was with nuance, 
Jason tended to stick to only a few practiced movements when using them on the fly. In that moment, as she retracted her outstretched arm and her opponent moved toward her to launch his counterattack, Sarah knew exactly what to do. As Jason swung his meaty gorilla fist, she ducked directly under it. So Jason brought his enormous gorilla elbow down in a sharp thrust, but Sarah had seen him do something very similar to this before. She anticipated it. She turned, dancing from the heel of her right foot to the toes of her left, and twisted out of the path of the elbow, twirling inside her opponent's guard, and threw a punch right at the center of his chest. She put everything that she had behind that strike, connecting with his avatar, but while the avatar shuddered, as if injured, the man inside it showed no sign of harm. In fact, Jason smiled from behind the gorilla avatar's glowing face, and out of the corner of her eyes, Sarah could see two end-to-table-sized palms coming at her from either side. She jumped and flipped backward, doing a handspring out of the path of the giant clapping hands. They smacked into each other so hard that the resulting sound shook the arena floor. As Sarah found her footing again, air displaced by the impact slapped her in the face, causing her curls to bounce around above her shoulders and threatening to knock her off balance again. She had to brace herself, and she'd only just gotten her bearings again when Jason pressed his attack. She barely had time to duck under another of his strikes. This time she surged backward, out of his reach, rather than try to get in close. Scowling, Sarah began moving around the open space within the arena, changing direction at random. She hoped to shake her opponent, but even though he didn't seem able to predict where she would go, his monkey form let him keep on her. She needed a new plan. It was possible that Jason's monkey avatar was frail enough for her to harm him through it, but she just wasn't quick enough to get inside his guard in that form. The gorilla form, on the other hand, was slow enough for her to hit, but she wasn't a fighter who relied on power. The gorilla avatar was too strong to penetrate with conventional means. That left only one option. Like her sister, Sarah had been working on something special for this match, something besides her new style of dance-like movements. Uh, something that she had hoped she wouldn't need. She had never actually tried it in battle under real pressure, but now she had no choice. As she darted around the arena, dodging Jason, who got closer and closer to her with each pass, Sarah bore down on the energy of her soul and forced it to spread out into the air around her. With that energy, she gripped and held on to the liquid in the air. Tears, sweat, blood, and just plain old water vapor, it all in that moment answered to her will. She wasn't practiced enough to hold on to much of it, but it would hopefully be enough for what she needed. With one final push, she put a bit of distance between herself and Jason and then held her ground. Seeing an opportunity and being completely unaware of Sarah's plan, Jason lunged at her and shifted to his gorilla form avatar. He swung his enormous fist down at Sarah, but she was ready. She brought her right hand around, revealing it to be surrounded by a floating orb of water. She ducked beneath Jason's oncoming fist and slung that water at the ground beneath her feet. The water spread out and coated the arena floor, and Sarah slid on it, right between Jason's legs, ending up behind him. Then, as his fist struck the ground, before he had a chance to react, Sarah motioned toward herself with that same hand and muttered, Petite wave. The water surged toward her, sweeping Jason's feet out from underneath him. He fell hard onto his gorilla face. Sarah, her legs still charged with soul from the start of the fight, jumped high into the air. Jason rolled his gorilla avatar over onto its back, just in time to see Sarah hanging in the air above him. Water trailed behind her right hand. She made a fist, that water pulling in close around it, wrapping her four fingers, condensing into brass knuckles made of super dense ice. Using the momentum of her fall and the element of surprise, Sarah drove those knuckles into the jaw of Jason's avatar. I see knuckles, she roared, and the avatar cracked outward from the point of impact and shattered. Jason stood up and his avatar began to form around him again, but before it could finish, Sarah turned on the spot and smacked him in his actual jaw. It was his turn to spin in place, and then he collapsed on the spot. He didn't get back up and had to be helped out of the arena, just like his allies before him. The crowd roared, and for just a moment, Sarah basked in the glory of her impressive come-from-behind win. Then she realized that the crowd wasn't cheering for her, at least not entirely. After all, as Jason was carted away, his team leader stepped up to replace him. Interesting, said Christopher Johnson as he stepped into the arena behind his opponent. Sarah turned to face him. He was completely calm, as if the match so far had only been a mild curiosity to him. His eyes studied her with an intensity that was almost palpable. Even though Sarah knew that Christopher was only assessing her combat skills, the sharp glare made her uncomfortable. Sarah scoffed at Christopher. She assessed him as he was assessing her and said, I'm interesting, am I? 
If you think so already, you're about to be floored in more ways than one. She shot Christopher a little smirk, but Christopher didn't respond to her witty banter, and her smirk turned into a scowl. All right, she said more to herself than to her opponent. We'll skip the question and answer portion. More carefully than she had against Jason, Sarah moved toward her new opponent, attempting to gauge his strength. She'd planned to feign a strike and then jump back out of Christopher's reach when he moved to counterattack, but as she approached him, she was surprised when he didn't react at all. He didn't even raise his guard, so after a moment's hesitation, Sarah made the split decision to press her attack. She did feign her first strike, but then she darted to the side and danced around behind Christopher, pushing her body as hard as she could, moving as fast as she ever had, and launched an uppercut at the back of his head. Unsurprisingly, Christopher leaned forward, dodging Sarah's strike, so she turned on her heel, hopped up, and launched a back fist at the side of her opponent's head. Without even turning to face her, Christopher anticipated this exact follow-up, ducking beneath Sarah's attack. Then, the very moment that her fist had passed over his head, he straightened back up and twisted at the waist, driving an elbow into Sarah's ribs. She was knocked sideways and fell hard, pinning her left arm between her torso and the arena floor. Finally, Christopher turned toward Sarah. His face was as intense and expressionless as it had been since he had walked into the arena. She looked forward to seeing that expression change. Still lying on the ground, she smiled and gestured with her ice-free right hand. As she had fallen, Sarah had turned her icy knuckles back into water and slung it onto the ground around Christopher's feet. Now with that single, simple gesture, that water sprung up and toward her, as it had done to ensnare the feet of Jason's avatar only a few minutes ago. Yet, somehow, Christopher anticipated this as well. He jumped over the crest of Sarah's tiny homemade wave, and then shuffled forward, dropping his heel toward his half-downed opponent. Sarah rolled backward, then sprung to her feet, dodging Christopher's foot by an inch or less. She rushed him, water still trailing through the air behind her right fist as she struck over and over at any potential opening that she saw in Christopher's guard. He deflected each blow, one after another, until finally, with a final twist and flourish, Sarah managed to throw one final punch at his torso while his hands were spread too wide to deflect it. Sarah condensed her ball of floating water around her fist again, forming something more akin to an icy glove this time, and struck with all of her strength. The attack hit, but in the final moment before it did, a soft blue aura flared up around Christopher's body. Waves of cold rolled off of him, almost giving Sarah pause. Hitting his chest through the aura felt like punching a mountain. Christopher didn't even stagger. Sarah stepped back, condensing her water even further around her fist, reforming her devastating icy knuckles. She wound up and struck again with all of the force that she could muster. Christopher didn't even bother to guard, and her attack hit again, but to Sarah's surprise, it once again didn't affect her opponent in the slightest, and her icy knuckles even shattered upon impact. Sarah stepped back again. What the hell? Christopher put his hands in his pockets casually, his cold blue aura still churning around him, stirring up his hair and clothes. This is why I found you interesting, he explained. Our powers are actually similar. You have a soul that controls water and ice, but you use your ice to attack, whereas I use my ice soul for defense. As long as my aura is up, it's as if my skin is made of icy layers several inches thick. I can't move as well, but I'm practically immune to harm. I was curious whether your ice-based offense would be able to break through. Maybe if you had an aura of your own, you might stand a chance. He paused for a second or so, waiting for Sarah to reveal that she did, in fact, have an aura. But she didn't, and Christopher sighed. I didn't think so, he told his opponent. I thought that maybe you would present a decent challenge, but I was wrong. Sarah barely heard him. She was too stunned to respond. She ran through all of her options in her head, but no matter what, she couldn't think of a single way that she could win from this position. It was staggering, but true. Christopher really was just that far out of her reach. However, she refused to allow this to hurt her pride. She hated it. But she told herself that, sometimes, losing really is the only option. She looked over her shoulder at her sister, and then back at Christopher, and she announced, I surrender. The crowd chattered, surprised at Sarah's decision. Christopher, however, didn't seem surprised in the slightest. He'd anticipated this move, just like he'd anticipated all the rest. But Sarah wasn't done yet. She smiled. I might not be able to beat you today, but one day I will. You can be sure of that. Just like you can be sure that you're still going to lose this fight. Because your next opponent is my sister. And she's the strongest fighter I've ever met. Present company included. Sarah turned and walked casually toward the sidelines where her team waited for her. Joe shot her an appreciative smile and then hopped the short distance from the sidelines to the arena. She walked over to face Christopher, her hands in her pockets, her stance as casual as her opponent's. She reached deep, forcing with effort so great that it was plain on her face, 
her life energy and the energy of her soul to mix. When she did, power surged from within her. She bored out on that power, miniature bolts of lightning lancing out from her body, and her entire body was surrounded by a churning, purple-black aura that stirred the air throughout the entire room. There was cheering from the stands. Of all of the auras that the crowd had seen today, Joe's had the most raw power and was therefore the most visually impressive. Even her allies watching from the sidelines were impressed. She's been practicing, said Tucker, beaming with pride. Yeah, she has, said Sarah. That movement trick isn't the only technique she's been working on for this tournament. Sarah was impressed with her sister, sure, but there was a pang of jealousy in her tone. She had always thought that she would be able to make an aura before Joe of all people, with the kind of soul that Joe had. But that wasn't important right now, though. What was important was knocking Christopher Johnson off of his pedestal, and if anyone had a shot at doing that, it was Joe, especially with her new aura. That's what Sarah chose to focus on, her sister's success. Impressive, Christopher Johnson said, and his cold expression changed. His gaze didn't grow any less intense, but his lips, ever so slightly, curled into a smile of anticipation. I guess this competition might prove challenging yet. Joe smiled back at him, her heart pounding with excitement. You have no idea. The stout man, still recovering from the brief shock of seeing Joe summon such a powerful aura, corrected himself and declared, This is it, the final round of our exhibition match. The underdogs, Team Dueling Hearts, have managed to fight Team Beatdown to their final man. It's come down to a one-on-one -on -one final bout between the two team leaders, who will come out victorious. The crowd around them cheered, filling the room with sounds of excited adulation. Uh, Joe and Christopher stood opposite each other, their casual stances almost mirroring one another. And meanwhile, after a beat, the stout man announced, Christopher Johnson versus Joanna Zeker. Let the heart-to-heart -heart begin. Without any warning, the two fighters disappeared, at least as far as the watching crowd could tell, as they charged at each other at full speed, and the entire arena was filled with an explosion of clashing powers.